Чаро! Hello, my soccer universe, and so it begins with a good result for me. Euro 2020 is upon us, and we have a statement win for Italy. Uh, that was a big statement yesterday. <laughs> I definitely have to say that. And on many, many, many accounts, uh, because the statement already started kind of with the opening ceremony, which honestly I thought was relatively tastefully done. It had a certain 70s vibe to it, which I really, really like. It was not all this. Yes, there were a few uh, drummers that were lifted up, up, up in the air, but none of these acrobatics and people dancing around. We had their uh, <laughs> brass orchestra playing some music. We had some balls brought in. And then to top it of all, uh, yeah, yeah, lots of fireworks, which was very co colorful. And then we had Andrea Bocelli singing Nessun Dorma. Yes, should have been Pavarotti probably, but he's not alive anymore. Uh, everything was great up until that point. I, it, it really got me in, in the mood and I don't like opening ceremonies all the more, but this I think was really, really tastefully and well done. Then we then got the opening song with a lot of virtual uh, stuff on there. And yes, I do like you too. So I was happy about that. But I have to say this song was rather uninspired. And yeah, if that is not all about, we're going to hear for next time. That did not get me pumped up. Nessun Dorma got me pumped up. I think that there it should have ended. Half the Italians and the Turks walk out, both of them belting out the anthems as you would expect it. Uh, we had spectators there and although it was only roughly 13,000, it actually made a whole lot of noise. You don't need 80,000 in there. Uh, it was a, was a really, really nice overall to start. But yeah, uh, on the walkout, I felt the first bum note of the evening coming. And I still was hoping that uh, Walkout jackets will give away the uniforms, but it really didn't look good to Turkey. Turkey with the red pants and Italy with white socks. That had me already worried. And then Chiellini opens his jacket and Italy is playing in, the, in those white jerseys. And Turkey in red, which does not make much sense because Turkey has home jerseys in white. Um, so I was really expecting Italy to play in blue. I maybe can see that Turkey said, okay, we are yeah, with a nominal home team, but we're not really playing at home, so let's wear the away jerseys. Okay, but why cannot Italy play in blue? Red and blue works well. I mean, Italy, if Turkey plays in all red and Italy play in their regular home uniforms, fine. I don't know if there are any UEFA regulations. I honestly think that Italy say, okay, we can play in this one, we can play in that one. And Puma probably will like us to play in the new ones to make them a little bit more popular. That was the one and probably the only bomb note for me on the entire evening. Everything else was really nice. The game, yeah, uh, before the game gets started, the other uh, real gimmick, uh, yeah, Volkswagen is sponsoring the Euros, so we need to uh, have a little remote control Volkswagen coming on the field with the ball. That I found highly ridiculous. Have the ref walk out with the ball, honestly. Okay, rant over. The game itself, I have to say, started a little bit nervous, but I, I think after 10 minutes or so where none really could get anything together, you could see uh, how that game was going to be for most of the time. Italy having huge control of, of the ball. I mean, uh, midfield of Jorginho, Locatelli and Berardi, uh, no, Barella, Berardi was uh, further for, 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 for up. I mean, that's a great midfield uh, to start out, out with. Uh, is always going to control the middle of the park. And then, you know, you had Spinazzola uh, coming uh, over the left side, uh, who probably was my player of the game. Um, and, you know, Florenzi on the other side, probably not much. But, you know, a lot, lot of Roman dudes, because Insigne star, star starting up top as well. So, yeah, we had a lot of uh, Roman dudes um, putting their stamp on to, on to the, on to the game. And Turkey 
the one thing I said, they didn't want to get caught by this Italian team on a counterattack because that, I think this, this is very, very, very dangerous. Also, it said, well, we have been really, really solid, especially in qualifying. I think Turkey only conceded three goals and none of them were from open play. So they were super, super tight on on, on the back and the pairing of Suyunci and Demiral on, on the back. Uh, many said, yeah, uh, if Italy would have that centre-back pairing, then uh, Italy probably will, will be one of the favourites of in that tournament. And so it was really Italy having trouble to find the breakthrough because uh, they were at least, uh, you know, you had the form, the back being tight, and then the next line also really, 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 really tight. The only thing, Chalonogli was a little bit lost, and Burak Yilgin was never really got into to the game. It was basically Turkey wanted to get out with a nil nil. That uh, it felt like like, like that the whole time, and there were only some chances. I mean, early on, I think in C, uh, in senior, no, not in senior, um, immobile, probably should have put the ball on the net when it was cut back. Um, from uh, by Berardi, uh, then I think Insigne put one wide where I, I have seen him score these. Uh, Bonucci had a header, you know, uh, it kick a little bit, it was a little chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. There was a penalty, there were a few penalty calls, but the one was uh, right before halftime. Um, when uh, the ball, I think, hit Celic on the arm, new rules now. I mean, in Serie A, they a stonewall penalty. Um, now, and I actually think it's not a bad rule that, we, you know, he was in a natural movement and, and you can see when a ball hit, hits him, the arm goes straight, straight back, it's not outstretched in a way. So yeah, I can see why it was not the pan penalty. It looked a little bit weird at first, I was a little bit upset, but um, now that we have the new rules, I think this actually makes a whole lot more sense than whatever we saw in the past two, two years, where as soon as the ball touches the hand, it's a penalty. So. I think that overall was good. I was afraid that this will just be a 1-0 win and that Turkey will break at one point uh, because Italy really controlled this game and I, as I said, I, Donnarumma or Dollarumma as I should call, call him, could have pitched a tent in his box and it would have been fine. Uh, there was really not much to do for him. Um, second half, um, Florenzi came off and Di Lorenzo came, came on. Uh, Florenzi really didn't do, do too much to give a little bit more punch up front. Um, and the breakthrough came in the 53rd when Berardi was on the wing making a really nice cross where I think that Insigne Immobile could have connected as well. But it was Demiral who then puts it into his own net. One in Italy, fully deserved. And then we saw the new Italy. Uh, not one that will hold back, although they were defensively really, really, really sound. Although there was one uh, counterback, Cengiz Unger, Unger, a little bit la late, late, later on, very you can see this. If Bonucci and Chiellini are the center back pairing, they can be caught out. Uh, but then it was Spinazzola running back and you know, getting his former team at the, uh, the ball off him, uh, and sending him no, no, the sense is saying, why then there was no danger anymore? So, you know. Uh, taking care of that as well. I think against fast opponents, you might want to think about a different defender uh, back there, which I think will definitely happen. But yeah, it was then all Italy. Italy trying to go for the jugular, and this is what I absolutely enjoy, and this is why I'm squarely behind Italy in this tour in, 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 in this tournament. Uh, the second goal, Spinazzola um, assists Immobile. Basically, it was a, a really nice save from uh, a shot from Spinazzola um, by Jakir. And then Immobile just reacts very fast, pull puts in the net in the 66 and celebrations all around. I mean, you knew at that point. Italy has, has won it, although if Turkey would have put, put, put one back, back in, Nah, not really, but Turkey needed to open up and then if you make a fail, uh, uh, a failure, <laughs> if you make an error like Jack here, uh, play, playing it out and then over four, four stations, a uh, ball comes to Immobile and to Insigne, who beautifully curls it in. 3-0, Italy wins it all around. As I said, the only bum note for me was the jersey matchup. Italy could have well played in blue and, you know, I'm still mourning that these jerseys are not worn at these Euros. So yeah, uh, it was the only the all, all, only game, and you would think there there shouldn't have been too many changes, uh, but actually, I mean yes, Italy's lead is lead leading group. They are more or less with that win. They will probably will make the knockout phase, and having beaten a Turkey team, and I think the talk will all the talk about how great Italy was. 
However, you will have to question a little bit Turkey as well, because this is a team that beat the Netherlands, they can play outstanding, but that did not really show up. You be, I don't think we saw the real Turkey, but maybe we, we have to wait. Uh, maybe the stage was too big. I know Italy never has uh, won, uh, lost in Rome. Uh, Turkey, I think, has still to win against Italy or something. Like that. Italy, for the first time, scoring three goals at the Euro Tour and Tour tournament. Also, or rather, and the first time we had uh, three goals in an opener. So, you know, many, many firsts there. But I gotta, we gotta ask questions of Turkey as well. Is this really the team that we have been all talking up? Let's see. As I said, uh, standing-wise, there's not much happening except that Italy is winning. However, if we go now for the projection, uh, it also, on paper, it didn't change much, but you can see Italy is heavily favored now to finish first. And as I said, it might not be the worst thing, as we'll see again in a second, to f it Italy to finish second. So just hold, hold off. I mean, I was happy for Italy to win this one. But I also thought, yeah, maybe, maybe the draw is not all that bad. Uh, the real changes come now because Turkey loses uh, expected points. Not many, but it's enough to send Turkey down into sixth place uh, of the third place team. So uh, we have actually some switches there. It's not Germany, Austria, Sweden and Russia who move in. And with that, there are whole three changes because now suddenly Germany goes up and plays against Belgium and you can see how loaded at the moment the projected bracket would be. Belgium, Germany, Italy, Ukraine. And I don't think that uh, Belgium will win easily against Germany. Where's the lower bracket? Yeah, we have Spain, Austria, England, Portugal. That's loaded, but then Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, Denmark. And I think Italy instead of Switzerland, would actually balance this whole bracket out uh, quite some. So yeah, uh, those are changes. Again, the changes are rather minor. Suddenly I have the Netherlands all the way in the semifinal, which is also something I at this moment cannot really see. But if this bracket really would uh, turn, turn out this way, I think the Netherlands would fancy the chances, although Sweden and Denmark are not easy opponents. Um, overall favorites, Again, on top, not many changes. Italy is still back there. Uh, however, you can also see that Italy has is now almost level, is more or less level on points with England, Spain, uh, and only uh, slightly behind Bel 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 Belgium and France. So you know everything got a little bit tighter up top, and then a few changes. But this is more simulation error on the bottom. Today we have the first. I, I always like a second day almost the most because this is where you get in the, in, in, in the groove a little bit. Um, maybe not the greatest games with Wales, Switzerland, although you know might be interesting. Kicking off at three o'clock in Baku, then in Copenhagen we have Denmark, Finland, a Scandinavian affair, which will be interesting for sure. And then Belgium, Russia is the big game. It's a home game for Russia, but Belgium is a nominal home team and. We have a Belgium squad that De Bruyne will for sure not play and, you know, Enas Hazard probably also not, so not quite fit, so will be, <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the game yesterday. Uh, how do you think it will go for Italy and Turkey going forward? Uh, also, opening ceremony, if any thoughts you can tell me uh, as well. Also, let me know how you like that I now put some match details in there. I want to do this for the rest of the tour to tour tournament. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if I will do this for uh, regular games uh, dur uh, during the club season. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.